Hello, my horror movie peeps. It was kind of a wonderful year to be a horror movie fan. In fact, it'll continue to be that way because 2023 was another year that proved if you make a decent horror movie on a low budget, you will make profits up the wazoo. What I'll be doing here for you in this video is giving you my top 10 favorite horror movies of this year. Reminder, this is just my opinion, and with horror, I feel like it is very subjective. The things we find interesting in that genre is gonna be completely different from what you find interesting in there. But no matter how different or similar our lists end up looking like, it is true, horror movies are winning. This past year in the movie news world, I kept mentioning how studios are starting to make their own horror division, Sony, Paramount, Blumhouse is still killing it. And while that could mean we're getting a lot of generic studio mess, I'm hopeful we'll get a couple of hidden gems thrown in there that'll end up on all of our list in the coming years. But all right, without further ado, let's begin with number 10 on my list, Megan. This little crazy robot girl doll was such a delight to see on screen. While I wish they would have pushed for the R rating and had it be a little bit more graphic, I'm just glad I got an evil doll movie where the doll is moving about and doing crazy shenanigans. It was campy fun horror and with them green lighting a sequel I am just thinking up the possibilities of what they could do with Megan in this world and just the idea of having like four or five movies of this doll kind of excites me. Number nine on my list, Cobweb. I really enjoyed the aesthetic of this movie, setting me up for the Halloween season. The ending twist of the movie I found to be more fun than mind-blowing. I only wish they could have done a lot more with what they were doing at the end of the movie because all that stuff was kind of short-lived. It's one I feel kind of flies by under the radar of 2023, but hey, I liked it. Number eight on my list, Sick. Like I said, this is the COVID scream slasher in my opinion, written by Kevin Williamson. Two girls going out to rent a cabin in the woods when a slash is trying to take them down it was kind of an exhilarating fun ride that might get dated over the years with the pandemic subplot but it had all the makings of being a really entertaining slasher and kind of just makes me want kevin williamson to write more of them because he's just really good at it. number seven on my list influencer now this one's a little weird because it had like a small early release in 2022 but it didn't get a wider release to the public till 2023 so if you look this movie up it might take 2022 but i'm gonna count as a 2023 movie and with a title like influencer many of you might be checking out but i found it to be a pretty compelling movie about an influencer who goes to a foreign country to kind of just vlog only to encounter a girl with a birthmark and well things just go a little south i think it's best to go into this movie not really knowing anything but the twist and turns it takes really kept me on the edge of my seat it's not one i'm really seeing being talked about a lot but i think a lot of you would enjoy it number six on my list thanksgiving you want to talk about slashers making a comeback Thanksgiving did that. Nowadays, if you want to see a decent slasher movie, you have to wait for one of the big four to get rebooted, whether it be Michael Myers, Jason, Freddy Krueger, or Ghostface. Rarely do we see studios trying to take a chance and trying to create their own new slasher franchise, but Eli Roth pulled it off here. While of course not really doing anything new with the genre, playing on the tropes of slasher movies in a fun, exciting, rated R way really made Thanksgiving such a treat, and it's no wonder they greenlit a sequel, and I can't wait to see what's next for John Kava. Number five on my list, Scream 6. I wanted to love this movie so much more and I wish it was higher on this list of movies because Scream 6 did do a lot of amazing things. Not only do I think they successfully brought some new fresh feel to the Scream genre with Ghostface in New York, rocking a shotgun, being kind of the most brutal of the franchise, while also successfully getting me really invested in the new characters they set up from the fifth movie with Melissa Barrera, Jenna Orton, Ortega, Mason Gooding, and Jasmine Savoy Brown. This movie was doing everything absolutely right until the ghost face reveal. That's when the movie really went off the rails for me and ended up just repeating history, paying homage to Scream 2, and just kind of falling flat. But every minute before that was the Scream movie I was begging for. And honestly, it's even more sad looking back on Scream 6, realizing this might be the last time I see some of my favorite characters, whether it be legacy ones or the new ones they created, because Spyglass wants to be a bunch of buttholes, and I have no idea what the future of the Scream franchise is right now. So I kind of cherish Scream 6 a little bit more for that, but still the ending of this movie holds it back from me really loving it. Number four on my list, The Blackening. I'm so glad I watched this movie before the end of the year. I just randomly put it on because I saw it was on Amazon Prime. And did this movie really remind me of why I loved films like Scary Movie? Following a group of black friends who rent out a cabin in the woods as a little high school reunion, they're soon 
visited by a masked stranger that appears to be going after them just for their skin color. While it's definitely a lot more of a horror comedy, it is a bit of a slasher movie, it has a whodunit feel, so you're trying to figure out who the person behind the mask is, the reasoning behind it, but along the way, you were gonna be hysterically laughing, because I know I was. This was such a fun watch this year, and I'm happy they announced it's gonna be getting a sequel, because I need the world to bring back parody movies that just play on the tropes of horror films, because although we love to be scared of our movies, we also like to laugh at the horror movies as well. Number three on my list, Evil Dead Rise. Wow, did they make an awesome Evil Dead movie here, setting it outside a cabin in the woods and going into a high-rise apartment complex. To me, I felt like Evil Dead Rise was the perfect balance of some of the goofy, campy tropes while also maintaining some of the gory, nasty, dead-eye goodness you would get from, like, the remake of Evil Dead. I also love that it proved that studio executives sometimes have no idea what they're talking about with this movie originally set to go straight to streaming, but changing their minds at the last minute and releasing it in theaters, it was a box office hit. And without that proof that this kind of movie can be a box office hit, we wouldn't have conversations right now that they'd be thinking about making a new Evil Dead movie every couple of years, and Evil Dead Rise kinda is setting up that trend that you could just have the Necronomicon pop up anywhere at any location, and it's gonna be a blast of a good time. Number two on my list, Saw X. Look, this is mainly coming as a bias as a Saw fan, cause I grew up loving the Saw franchise with my dad, but after having lost hope in this series and thinking I was no longer interested, the way Saw X brought me back, not just as a fan, but really gave me hope that the future for this series is bright, is unbelievable. Never did I think a movie where John Kramer is the good guy and me sympathizing with him would work out, but it did. After 10 Saw movies and seeing Gory Trap after Gory Trap, this one got me squirmaging and covering my eyes at some of the stuff happening on screen. The inclusion of the legacy characters were done really well, and just the happy, joyous feeling I got once the movie was over. Oh, Saw X was amazing, and it's crazy that it took the 10th Saw movie to become one of my personal favorites. Bringing me to my number one horror movie of this year. <sighs> Talk to me. Ah! While I'll always be a sucker for IP horror, sequels, reboots, remakes, nothing beats getting an original fresh horror movie with some brand new ideas. What the Rocker Rocker Brothers did with A24's Talk To Me I thought was really exciting. The movie as a whole carried a very eerie feeling, but that one scene in particular where things just get unbelievably violent and graphic really was one of the most scarring experiences of 2023. I'm so interested to see where they decide to take the world next moving on with the sequel but it's also a bonus when I end up loving an A24 horror movie because that's even rare for me sometimes I don't always drive well with them but when they knock it out of the park let me know your guys' opinions on the horror movies of 2023. I know I still need to see When Evil Lurks and a handful of other movies, so if there's one I didn't mention on here, please let me know down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.